Hi, this is Brandon Spillane from ThirstGym.com. Today we're going to talk about an exercise called the weighted vertical jump to body weight vertical jump. This is very similar to our box jump variation that we've kind of talked to in the past, but we're just going to take the box away and then we're just going to jump with the same kind of idea in mind, but we're just going to drop the weight and keep going. So this basically benefits from the post-activation potentiation and basically what that means is we're going to do something that's harder and then we're going to reduce the load momentarily and then continue to go. Generally in post-activation potentiation, you're going to use a regular strength-based exercise paired with usually some kind of plyometric or power or body weight based exercise. This is a little bit different in the fact that we're going to generally just do the body weight exercise with a little bit of additional load, but the goal behind it is try to tax the nervous system a little bit more to where we're having to work really hard to move this weight, and then when we drop the weight, we're going to feel lighter, so to speak, which is going to act, since our nervous system was activated to try to move the heavier weight, including our body weight, then we're going to potentially be able to jump higher on the next jump. So. You will definitely need to have an athlete that's between intermediate and advanced to be able to do this. This is not for a beginner trainee. You've got plenty of plyometrics that you can benefit from for a long time. This is definitely something that you're going to use with your more advanced high school kids that are probably looking to try to go play in college. And then you're trying to add some flair to their exercises and kind of just do more than just vertical jumps and broad jumps and things like that. So... My first suggestion when it comes to adding weight, you're looking around 10 to 15% of their body weight, and that's probably about as heavy as you want to get. Anything too much heavier than that is probably going to start to diminish some of the power that you're going to get from the initial jumps. You know, it's really going to keep you down. And if you're going to try it, but by the time you get over that 15%, you're probably better off just doing a front squat or a back squat and then doing a body weight jump and getting a much bigger difference with your PAP option. So this is just a different plyometric option. Just take that basically for what it is, and you'll see some benefits from it, I promise. So... I prefer to use a kettlebell on this because of the handle, and I've talked about that in the past as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to program our jumps, however many we got with the weight, and then we're going to do one to two after with that with just body weight. So, you know, your programming options are entirely up to you, whether you want to do one weighted and two non, or one and one, or two and two, you know, fit that for your athlete and your time of year and what works best for your training program. Just know that that's an available option, and I'm not going to talk about each individual one. Just know that you need to have a weighted option and then a non-weighted option. So, this is a 13-pound kettlebell. This is even quite 10% for me, so this probably is not enough. I just grabbed one that I had laying around. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to jump as high as I can with the kettlebell, and I'm going to do three jumps, and then I'm going to drop the kettlebell, and then I'm going to do two jumps, okay? So all your regular jumping mechanics stay the same, and then we're just going to jump as high as we can once we drop the weight. So I'm going to be here. And just like that. So you probably noticed on that fourth jump, you can tell I got considerably higher, and on the fifth one, it started to diminish again. So take that for what it is. As you generally coach the exercise, just make sure that you're going to hit the ground and go. Try to make the jumps as similar as possible. You know, you got the weight down here, so you're not going to be able to use your hands like you normally would, and that's okay for this exercise. Just make sure that you're coaching it consistently. I prefer them to not be using their hands like crazy once we drop the weight, unless we're going to go get on a box, and it kind of seems to make a little more sense from the landing mechanics and stuff. So when you're programming this, probably three to five sets, count your ground contacts based upon your time of year. So if you're in season, keep them down. If you're out of season, you can probably push them a little bit more. But this is definitely something that we definitely use more in like a, a preseason or a peak-based methodology for certain times of year with more of our intermediate to advanced kids. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.